So anyways, um, as you all know, probably, there's a shit ton of vending machines in Japan. There's a fuck ton of vending machines. The thing is, is <clears throat> the Japanese love their fucking coffee. There are so many goddamn flavors of coffee, I can't even put it into words. There are ridiculous amounts. There's spicy coffee, there's fucking sweet coffee, there's, and they're all in cans like this. And a lot of the advertisements are people like drinking. There's one coffee called Fire Coffee. Did I get a picture of it? Let me see. No, I didn't get a picture of it. Dicks. Anyways, there's a picture of it somewhere on the internet. If you just look up Fire Coffee, Fire Coffee is fucking everywhere, and they have advertisements about it, and it's always people, like, drinking and going, like, oh, I'm on fire, rah! And they, like, fucking run over, like, a garbage truck trying to, like, fucking get to do what they want to do because they're so hyped up because of coffee. So. Um. But, yeah, it's pretty big, and they're pretty cheap, too. They're only about, like, a buck fifty or something like that for, like, a full can. Um, I'm eating the pizza. By the way, something else to note, too. Everything in Japan, I think I have a picture of this later, but everything in Japan, like as far as food goes, is generally about two-thirds the size of what it is in America. So, like, the cans, like the Coke cans and stuff like that, are about two-thirds the size they are in America. Same goes for the cereal. Same goes for uh, many of the packaged goods and stuff like that. And so I would assume that's why obesity is probably less there. That's probably a big contributor to it. Also, the fact that you have to walk something like 9 to 10 miles a day on average if you live in Tokyo. I tell you, man, after two weeks in Tokyo, I felt like a fucking horse. I walked literally 9 to 10 miles a day at least. You don't drive anywhere. You, just, you fucking walk everywhere. This is not Earthbound. Well, technically, it's Earthbound related because Earthbound is from Japan. This is the reverse Earthbound. This is an American talking about Japanese culture. There you go. This is the reverse Earthbound. Um, and just for the record, too, I'm not, like, mega weeaboo to the point where I'm like, Japan is the best country in the world, and everything for Japan is good, and it's good just because it comes from Japan, because I'm not that way at all. If something is good, I'm going to like it regardless of where it came from, from fucking Russia, from Italy, from France, from Japan. I don't give a shit. Japan has shit fucked up with it, too. They got xenophobia there and a bunch of other stuff. Um, in the older generations, they're kind of xenophobic. So Japan's not like this perfect nation, like, sent down from the heavens that a lot of people think it to be. It's, it's not a bad nation. I would love to go there on vacation every so often, but it's not a perfect nation like most people think. So, uh, I will say this. I stayed in Tokyo, which is basically, like, I stayed in, like, Shinjuku, and I went to Shibuya and Harajuku and all that stuff, which is basically, like, the equivalent of going to, like, New York or Las Vegas or something like that. So a very high amount of the girls there were really like dolled up, like full on like makeup, you know, like full $500 outfit type stuff, you know, their hair perfectly done. But the reason why I wouldn't sleep with anybody there or the reason why I wouldn't randomly sleep with anybody there that I don't know well or something like that, just random hooker off the streets or whatever, is because the STD rate there is 500% 400% what it is in America. It's 400% what it is in America. So, yeah. The reason why is it's a part of the culture somewhat where here in most other countries and stuff like that, if you uh, ask a girl to wear a condom or you tell a girl you're going to wear a condom or you ask her, you know, can, like, you have a condom, you know, I want to put one on or whatever, it's considered a smart thing. It's like, hey, you know, this guy's smart. He doesn't want to get me pregnant. He doesn't want to possibly pass STDs. It's considered an actual good thing. If you do it in Japan, it's generally considered an insult. It's generally considered somewhat offensive with some of the women. It's kind of like saying you're a slut. So a lot of guys don't use condoms because they don't want to insult the chicks. The second reason why is because the doctors there and stuff like that, like here, if you have anything wrong with you at all, people fucking fly to the doctors. They're like, oh my god, I stubbed my toe. I need to get five surgeons in here right fucking now. And stuff like that. In Japan, there's a lot of shame and stuff like that associated with the idea of having an STD. So a lot of people, if they get something like that, they just don't go to the doctor. Because they, they don't want anybody to know. So then it just spreads. Because you don't go to the doctor, you don't take the pills to get it diagnosed, and then it just spreads. And the last reason why is because... This isn't as prevalent anymore, but for a long time, you know how we used to have the stigma in America that like only gay people had AIDS and that if you were gay, that's the only way you could have AIDS and stuff like that? Well, in Japan, for a significant portion of time, but not so much anymore, there was the stigma that AIDS only came from foreigners. So 
to this day, there's actually a lot of bathhouses and stuff like that. And a bathhouse is just like a big fucking sauna type room or whatever where everybody gets like in a tub and just kind of like takes a bath, basically. A lot of foreigners were banned from bathrooms, or not bathrooms, but bathhouses because of the fear that they would spread STDs. And this still exists. Like there's a lot of bathhouses that would just flat out ban foreigners. There's also the stereotype too that a lot of foreigners will like rage and like throw a fucking barrel roll through the room or whatever and like get in fights with people. So that's why they're also somewhat banned from bathhouses. So one bad apple ruined the whole thing. Kind of sucks. Anyways, but you know, every culture has something like that. They can't really help it, you know. Um, so anyways, good old Colonel Sanders. Yes, Colonel Sanders is a fucking icon over there. Most of the KFCs have something like this outside of it. I will tell you too, uh, they have a lot of American fast food over there. They have KFC, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, man, Japanese KFC and Japanese McDonald's taste so much fucking better than American versions. I don't know why. It just tastes so much better. It's just, holy shit. It may have to do with the fact that it costs like three times as much as it does in America. Like a standard meal of like, I don't know, three chicken pieces and spuds and shit like that in Japan for KFC, it's like 12 bucks. So yeah, it's, it's basically like when you get foreign Asian food here and it costs like $15. In Japan, it costs like five bucks because it's just basically fast food. So it's kind of the reverse thing. So, yeah, you kind of get reamed for price with so-called foreign foods when it comes to this stuff. It's also kind of interesting, too, because a lot of the restaurants are built vertical. So you order your food on the first floor, and then you eat on the second and third floors. Uh, right now, there's a hundred... No, wait. There's a hundred... No, I'm not doing that right. Eighty. There's eighty yen and a dollar. There's eighty yen and a dollar right now. But you can basically take yen to be pennies. So like 100 yen is like a dollar, if you just want to do it that way. So that's basically, so if you see somebody say they won 10,000 yen, in reality they won um, 100 bucks. See what I'm saying? Um, I just thought this was cool, because this is actually an elevator inside of an arcade. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, uh, something interesting, there's actually, I'll get to it in the pictures, ex scubiare. And I'll show you an example of some of the stuff there. It's in one of the pictures. Um, I thought this was just kind of just taking a picture of people around. I don't think this has anything relevant. Escalator, sorry. I always use the same terms. This is kind of interesting because this is a map of the area. Wait, let me make sure. Am I doing this right? Okay. Um, this is a map of the Shinjuku area, I believe. And all these little icons are all the dots of like stuff that's there. So like clothes, interior stuff or whatever, food, bars, clubs, and all that stuff. Look at all the fucking clothing places. There's like a shit ton of clothing places. Like in Japan, they are insane about fashion. If you think that's bad, there's some fucking clothing for you. This is in Harajuku, the clothing and fashion superstore or super fucking town. So if you need clothing, you fucking come here because it is here. It is fucking there. So um, I have a picture of Harajuku, which I'll show you later on. But the interesting thing is, is in Japan, there's not really a monopoly on clothing like there is in America with a few places. So a lot of independent uh, clothing providers, a lot of like indie clothes makers, are able to actually make a living off their clothes. So there's a fuck ton of, uh, yeah. Well, you guys can hear me talk, right? Okay. Well, Trina... If you convert your, it depends on where you're from, Trina. If you're from America, you'll actually lose money if you convert it into yen. But if you're from the UK, you'll gain money if you convert it into yen. And this is Half-Life 2, the arcade game. They made a Half-Life 2 arcade game over there. And guess what? It's network connected. So you can play over the internet with this. And it has, there's the website, and there's the joysticks, which are very hard to see. Yeah, there we go. It's a full machine. So, yeah, there's my friend Andrew right there playing it. So, uh, it's kind of hard for me to play because I'm not too good with the joystick setup, but this connects online, all that stuff. The interesting thing is, is you can't talk directly, but you can press buttons to give voice commands like, you suck dick, and stuff like that. I think this cost about a dollar and a half. <clears throat> Most arcades over there are internet connected. They are, so, yeah, so it's, it's pretty fucking awesome, I have to say. Um... I didn't get any video of this, I don't think. 
I have had the Ramune Japanese sodas, yeah. <laughs> and so here's a little video to, or a little flyer for it, you know, saying suck a dick and everything else. Interesting thing is that a lot of arcade machines there use cards. Like they use cards to keep your data and stuff like that. And so I still have a few of those I kept from Japan, mostly from Rhythm Games and uh, the tennis game over there. Do you think I should do... Do you think I should eventually do a video series on YouTube showing these pictures and like talking about them and stuff like that? Like more summarized dialogue instead of just going off on tangents like this? Because it'll be the same photos I have that I've shown you guys, but you know, what can I do? Um, Trina, I'm trying to see. Well, yeah, they have cards that you have money on, but what I'm talking about is a card that keeps your game data, like your player data, like your username, your high scores, the songs or levels you've unlocked, stuff like that. Yes, Dr. Fox say, everything in Japan tells everybody to suck dick. It is a national pastime. Exactly. And here is a gigantic street crossing in Shinjuku, right by the JR station. And it's that wide because that many people actually cross it at one point. Like, it gets that fucking... It actually gets packed from one end to the other. So it's pretty huge. Uh, this is Nova, which is actually a jet, like a... a exchange student type thingy. It's for like people who want to come from other countries and like live here and like take classes to be teachers here and stuff like that. Well, in Japan, not here in California. So that's a pretty uh, big building, stuff like that. It's pretty... Uh, Lumine. I don't know if they call it Lumine or Lumine, but this is actually a shopping center in Shinjuku. There's a lot of English. There's a lot of words that don't make any fucking sense like about what they're actually about in Japan, so you just kind of get used to that. You just kind of like, well, it's just fucking named dog cat and it's fucking talking about selling baseball caps so it's like you know what the fuck it is japan where people have pushed people into subway cars i didn't see that while i was there but it gets ridiculously packed it does get extremely packed in the subway cars like you can't move like you literally cannot fucking move all the english in japan is mainly because of world war ii uh there's a lot of military bases that occupied it after world war ii and so a lot of english culture kind of like went into it like you know how there's a lot of like how it used to be like really cool here to like have Asian like calligraphy or like you know caricatures on your body and stuff like that, or Aaron, uh, Asian characters, like letters and stuff like that in kanji. It's kind of the same thing over there. Like if you know English, you're automatically a cool kid. If you know English really good over there, you have fucking thirty cool points. You are automatically, you're fucking awesome. So you know that's like kind of like a big status quo over there. If you, you know, know some English speakers, if you know some Americans, there's big points, stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's, there's actually, you know how we have, like, Japantown in San Francisco? There's actually an American town in Japan. I didn't see it, but there is one. Um, there's another street. Uh, I think they mark off bike areas with red, I believe. Okay, I just found, I took pictures of English signs. So, I don't really think I need to explain this one. Sure, Josh Antes, I will fling that motherfucker Hulk style to Michigan. Bakery Cafe, good times, American Grill restaurant, fuck yeah. I don't know what an American Grill is, but... Yeah, I went to Tokyo in 2005 and 2007. These are from the 2007 pictures. America, fuck yeah. Fucking know your moms while I'm dropping a lot of bombs. Oh, that was terrible. Anyways... Um, I went in 2007 in October. Usually the fall season is the best there because summer's really fucking hot. And uh, spring allergies and winter it rains. Yes, standard burgers. Just standard. Just standard burgers. Not anything special. It's fucking standard. Just run of the mill. Standard burgers. So, fucking amazing. 